All right. Well, today I wanted to talk about how your phenotype affects your dating life as a man. So what does phenotype mean? It's basically your specific traits such as your height, your eye color, your skin tone, your facial features, your body, your hair, basically just like a, a mixture of your genomic makeup and your environment. I believe your phenotype has a major impact on who will find you attractive and your dating life as a whole. There are certain phenotypes that are just more attractive than others. You know, why are some people universally attractive and other people aren't? I think a lot of it has to do with your phenotype and the features that are associated with it. What do you when when you think of what's universally attractive to women, you know, you think of features like, you know, tall height, good bone structure, so, you know, prominent shin, strong cheekbones, strong jawline, you know, sharper facial features, like, a, you know, a sharper nose, you know, hunter eyes, greener blue eyes, darker hair. These are all seen as more universally attractive. And you know, women aren't consciously thinking of phenotype when they gauge whether they're attracted to a guy, but it's something that's just much more subconscious, much more hardwired that registers whether they're attracted to you or not. When you think of more attractive phenotypes, the uh, the, uh, the Hallstatt and Schrander phenotypes that are typically found in Northern Europe have much wider universal appeal in general. You could use like someone like Dolph Lundgren as a good example. The Hallstatt or Schrander phenotypes typically have good bone structure. They tend to be taller, have wider shoulders, narrow hips, and blue eyes. And these are all features that are just universally attractive. So, you know, a tall, blonde haired, blue eyed, you know, good looking Swedish guy, he could pretty much go anywhere in the world. And, you know, the vast majority of women, you know, would be attracted to him. The same can't be said about most of their phenotypes, though. Another phenotype that tends to have wider universal appeal to an extent is the North, North Pontid, which is common in Poland and Russia, where they tend to also have sharper facial features and wider faces. And I think women like wider faces in general because they tend to signal higher testosterone and, you know, better, you know, bone structure. And these are features that are, you know, more more universally seen as attractive. Similarly, the paleo atlantid phenotype found in northern and western Europe tends to also be very tall, you know, tends to also have tall height, have large skulls and have more robust faces with heavy brow ridges. The Mediterranean phenotype also has a decent amount of wider appeal, especially in Western countries. So think of like the Cristiano Ronaldo type look or guys who look similar to him. They tend to do well across the board, especially, you know, with the um, tanner skin, unless it's like in Asia where they tend to, where, you know, a lot of Asian women tend to like guys with fair skin. That's more of the standard of beauty there. And I think with the more attractive phenotypes, they tend to date and have kids with a wider variety of women just because they have more universal appeal. And on the opposite end, you have some phenotypes that have a lot of physical characteristics that are seen as less than ideal. So the Bambutide phenotype, which is a type of the African pygmies who are actually the shortest humans on Earth. And the males don't typically reach over 140 centimeters and their noses are the widest in the world. And they overall, they just have like softer facial features. So you can imagine, you know, how much they would struggle if they ever came to the U.S. or the U.K., you know, with dating due to women naturally just being drawn towards taller men. They would be way shorter than the average woman in Western countries and even in the East. They'd be shorter than the average woman in the East as well. Another example would be the Australian phenotype for the native Australian people. Uh, they tend to have wider bulbous noses and receding chins. And these two features in and of itself would be seen as unattractive in the West where the ideal is like straighter noses and, and broader square chins with good projection. And also like the central lead phenotype would also be an example of a phenotype that would be seen as more unattractive by the vast majority of Western women due to their short height, you know, their, their smaller skulls, recessed chins, and weaker cheekbones. You know, I think most women would prefer a guy to have the opposite. You know, they'd prefer a guy to have strong cheekbones, taller height, a more defined chin, and overall just a larger skull. And lastly, like uh, the last example would be the Neo-Danubian phenotype 
would be another example kind of found in Eastern Europe that tends to have more of a snub nose, you know, more rounded chin and like slanted eyes. And like all of these are features that would be seen as less than ideal in terms of overall attractiveness. And with the phenotypes that have less universal appeal, I feel like they would tend to date and have kids with in their own phenotype because they have less universal appeal outside of it. I think there's also a large cultural element to phenotypes. Uh, the best example I could give would be someone like Michael B. Jordan. I think overall, he's he's probably above average looking. I mean, he has more Western facial features, but he doesn't have like, you know, the good bone structure. Um, like he kind of has like a slightly recessed chin. He doesn't have you know, a, a very visible jaw. But overall, because he has the Western features and he's been kind of popularized by the media, you know, his look has become very popular in in the West, particularly in the US, probably Europe as well. So, you know, guys that tend to have his phenotype have really benefited from that in the West. Whereas the look of Michael B. Jordan he would tend to have less appeal in places like, you know, Asia, um, where women generally prefer more fair skin. You're also your phenotype may also be popular in a certain place or city. Like as another example, like take a place like Miami. I've noticed that more of like a Medi Mediterranean type of like Cristiano Ronaldo type of look will do really well in dating as it just has more mass appeal there. Whereas in Asia, that phenotype may not be as popular there because they tend to, you know, value from a beauty standpoint, fair skin. Uh, not to say if you're a guy who looks like Cristiano Ronaldo that you wouldn't do well in Asia, but you may notice you have just more appeal in a place like Miami. And as, a, as another example, let's just say you have like the conga lead phenotype, you know, you may not do very well in a lot of places in the West because like that specific phenotype may not be desired there and you would tend to do better in dating, you know, in that Congo specific region. But sometimes that's not the case because you could have a phenotype that is not seen a lot in a certain region and some women may want to quote unquote, I guess, give you a try, you know, because they haven't experienced that before. Especially if you're, you know, in within that, you know, phenotype, you're more attractive. Also, another kind of well-known example would be like the K-pop look. So like Korean guys definitely have appeal throughout Asia, but also with like younger women in the US and in Europe. Whereas like before the K-pop trend, they definitely had less appeal in Western countries. In general, as far as the US goes, from my observation, I think it's pretty common knowledge, but I figured I'd say it again, is that Indian guys, Asian guys, and black guys with like less Western facial features tend to struggle a lot more. Um, obviously, if you're like a very attractive Indian guy, very attractive Asian guy, you know, even like I said, if you're like a very tall, masculine black guy with less Western features, you'll still do well in the U.S., but you just you just won't have that you know universal type of appeal as say you know a more Scandinavian guy. It also depends on how attractive you are within your phenotype compared to other men. So let's just say a woman may like the Ethiopioid phenotype, where the men tend to be taller with more Western facial features than say like the Congoloid phenotype. So if you're a guy who's taller and has, you know, sharper facial features than other guys in that phenotype, you'll find that more women who like your phenotype will gravitate towards you more than say most other guys. One thing you can also try to do is find a celebrity that has a similar phenotype as you and then try to emulate their look to an extent. A celebrity will usually have a certain hairstyle facial hair and like um, style that matches their phenotype well that may also match their skin tone and if you kind of emily emulate a similar style this can help you appear more attractive even if you're not doing any like hard looks maxing in general if you're attractive you'll you'll find some women of each phenotype that will find you appealing it just might not be all women on the planet and keep in mind there are very few people in the world that are 
universally appealing across all cultures. Let's just say you have like a Cristiano Ronaldo type look. You know, you may want to kind of emulate your hairstyle and the way you dress based on his kind of look. Because one thing about celebrities and when it comes to style and, you know, in general, whether it's hair or it's clothes is, you know, they tend to have really good style because, you know, they're, they tend to have a really good look that's optimized for their phenotype because, you know, they're constantly being seen in the media. Well, if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like. Feel free to comment down below your thoughts on how your phenotype impacts your dating life and feel free to subscribe. Until next time, take care.